so as far as sulfur systems, uh, all plants need sulfur. It's an essential part of amino acids, which is built into protein. So all plants have to have it. One thing that farmers really need to be cognizant about and really think about now in these high yielding crop production systems is the sheer amount of fertilizer nutrients that we remove with these high yields. For instance, 100 bushel per acre wheat needs 188 pounds of nitrogen per acre to be taken up in that plant and 25 pounds of sulfur per acre. And a lot of people don't realize that as systems have changed so much in just say 20 or 30 years, from uh, maybe in the mid-Atlantic, you know, going from 20 pounds per acre of sulfur deposition to basically zero now. To basically all of the sulfur that you needed used to be applied via rainfall, now it's not. Uh, a few years ago, we completed some work in barley and we easily saw a 20 bushel per acre yield increase in fields with sulfur versus no sulfur. So sulfur deficiency in wheat is often confused by farmers for nitrogen deficiency, but there are some key differences. If you're just looking at the field overall, the field may look very pale yellow and uh, the plants would be pretty spindly. But if you look closer, the sulfur in the plant does not move very readily. So what'll happen is the older leaves will stay green and the new growth will be yellow, where in nitrogen deficiencies, the nitrogen can move in the plant, so the older leaves will turn yellow and the new leaves turn green. In several cases where we have seen farmers actually cause their problem to be worse by misdiagnosing the crop. Because the plant is always searching for a 15 part nitrogen to one part sulfur, nitrogen to sulfur ratio, or lower. So one thing we really strive for to ensure that we're applying enough sulfur in our nitrogen fertilizer systems is that you place about eight parts of nitrogen for every one part of sulfur. That way you have the ratio, the fertilizer blend that you need to ensure enough sulfur is being applied to reach these high yielding goals that we're striving for. Having the nutrients available when you need it is imperative for high yields. So when you're looking at say a small grain system, you need to first make sure the, the plant establishes a good base in the fall with ensuring there's a nice, enough nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, and potassium to initiate really nice fall growth and tillering to make sure you have a nice stand and yield potential established as the season begins. And then over the winter, the plant slows down, the soil's cool. There's not a lot occurring in the system, but where we really need to make sure we have another large shot of nutrients, especially nitrogen and sulfur available, is in the spring. So as the plant greens up and where plant is really searching for nutrients to start packing on biomass. Because one thing we worry about, especially here in the mid-Atlantic, is if we have large rain events, some of these nutrients like sulfate and nitrate can actually leach down below active root zones. So one thing you might want to do is do a tissue test to make sure that there's plenty of nutrients there. So granular ammonium sulfate is, is excellent to use as a fertilizer source, especially due to its uh, ability to be applied in warmer and windy conditions where nitrogen volatilization can be an issue. And especially during the second spring application where we can have huge nitrogen losses if we use some other fertilizers that contain this urea molecule as compared to ammonium sulfate. As compared to other products which may say have nitrate primarily as the source, this ammonium actually can stick to your soil and it actually is being placed in a bank until the plant can need it or until microbes convert it to nitrate later on in the soil system. But another huge benefit of ammonium sulfate is that both the ammonium and the sulfate ions are both readily plant available. So immediately when you apply that fertilizer granule to the field, that plant can start utilizing these nutrients to start increasing plant biomass, which ultimately is what you need for high yielding systems.